Если стена падет, мир обречен. В кино с 16 февраля. Великая стена. Hello back again. It's uh, Dota Pit Season 5 Land Finals, and I'm joined by Creed from Evil Geniuses. Hello there. Hi. How the tournament is going for you so far? I've heard some, you had some issues with PCs in practicing. So. Uh, yeah, we had a couple of hiccups here, but other than that, the, the admins are doing really well. The hotel's nice, so I think we'll be fine until tomorrow where we start playing. So yeah. Yeah, so today you're mostly... We're just watching the games pretty much, yeah. we're, not, we're not playing. I see. But this tournament is apparently not that decisive for you in terms of uh, getting invites to Kyiv Major. Uh, it's more or less, I would say, obvious for your team. Yeah. So uh, does it make things easier for you, not feeling that pressure, responsibility? What's your mindset and expectations for this event? Um, I think other teams than us have are like more like want to win more than us. They have like a big desire to win. Some of these teams haven't played that many events and they have to prove themselves before the like uh, regional qualifiers uh, invites and stuff like that. So I would say there are other teams that want to win really badly here. Uh, whereas we are here mostly to get better, get, uh, learn the new patch. So for us, it's more like a learning process. And um, I mean, obviously we want to do well, but we want to learn more than anything. Which team do you consider to be the toughest opponent for you in this event? I mean, obviously for us it's OG. Uh, I think it's the team that we are we have the most respect for, obviously, because they beat us a lot of times uh, at this point. So I'll say OG. Yeah. Yeah. Even Peter mentioned in his interview that uh, he believes this roster is capable to win the next TI in the case if you figure out how to beat OG. Yeah. So what can you say about that? Do I mean, you do you see some weaknesses as a former I think, player? I think I think we learn. We learn more and more every time we play them, and I think the, when we lose to them, we learn more than they learn from us when they win. Uh, so in that in that case, it's good for us. But I mean, they're a good team. I, I can often when we play against them, I can I know what their idea is and what they're gonna do. And you know, some kind of internal yeah, I mean, kitchen. I, I know. I just know like how they want to move on the map, and I, I have an idea about how to respond to it. But sometimes it's hard for me to like give it to my team and that's just something we have to to look at it specifically when we want to play against OG so we'll see how it, it goes next time I don't know there's a long time until TI so uh, hopefully we'll learn until that point at least uh, yep and comparing uh, these two teams the previous one and the current one uh, OG and, e and EG um, I mean management structure organizational stuff uh, well you played for OG, which was players' own team, and you left for EG, like more traditional, classic organization that providing to players some stability, salary, care. Uh, so, but things change right now, and it turns to be players' owned as well. Yeah. Well, does it matter for you? Um, I'd say the reason I joined EG, EG is because I knew it was going to be stable, and I knew that there was not so much that I would have to do personally. I didn't have to put too much thought into it. And it was a nice start for me. Like I just had to go into the team and focus on my play and being a captain and stuff like that. And now that I feel like I'm like integrated into the team, it's it's fine to go back to the like the player own type of thing. There's it's not that big of a difference. The I would say EG has an advantage because it already has sponsors and stuff, which is the biggest part about it. Um, so it's not that big of a difference. I mean, last year as as OG, it was. Um, it was kind of hard for us because we had to find our own sponsors and stuff like that and we started from scratch but joining EG is more like uh, it's already built up so it's good for us. Mm -hmm. But you had a similar um, issue choosing between Alliance and OG as far as I know there have been some rumors in 2015 so what were you driven by I mean, back in then? Uh, I didn't actually choose between OG and Alliance I was playing with both of them and uh, Notel was talking with um, S4 and it was just like like decided between them that it was better this way that they got a Swedish player and then I played with OG so it wasn't really my decision uh, I could have played for Alliance too it wasn't wasn't really my choice but yeah and they're just their decision to go with Swiss. It, it was it, I think it was just like everyone agreed that it was better for Alliance to get like a Swedish player and then uh -huh. OG went with me because it was an international squad and they had no tolerance so it, it made a lot of sense
Yeah, but when you started playing for monkey business, uh, you probably did not expect to reach that high level. But yeah, um, to the end of the season, you set a certain level, right? And finishing um, top, top, top 12 in the international might upset you a lot, yeah? So did you manage to keep that roster somehow? Have this roster any chance to be capped or, or no? Uh, the EG or the OG? OG. Uh, the last one? Uh, the last one, yes, after the uh, TI. I mean, I think uh, there were some issues that were going to be hard to resolve. And I think it was, I don't think it, it could have been fixed. It was like a matter of personalities uh, clashing. Um, personally, I, I didn't have any problems with any of the team, but it was just a mismatch that I think like over the time built up to be something worse and worse for us. Uh, so I think something just had to happen and I think me moving to EG was, I think, I felt like um, being one year with OG was fine enough for me, like one year was good. And then I wanted to try something new and I didn't want to do it halfway through the season. That would be pretty bad, both for OG and for the new team, I was, if I wanted to join a new team. So I thought after TI that it was a good opportunity for me to try something else. Mm -hmm. And I also thought it wouldn't damage OG. Uh, so that's why I, I thought it was a pretty good time. Well, to did you see this coming? My point is that uh, was the international like this decisive moment, or maybe you decided for yourself that if we're gonna finish, if we're gonna fail, I would leave. If we're gonna take top four, I would stay. Or mm, no, there's, there was nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I had a point. Uh, I think it was actually like around the last Dota pit, like right after Shanghai Major, where I was, I was. Uh, I was kind of sad about how the team performed and I thought we were like not really progressing. But you had or, some ups and downs. Yeah, Major. yeah obviously, <laughs> obviously there's, there's some downs and uh, at that point I talked to my parents and they said I should, I should stick with OG until after TI and obviously it made a lot of sense and I'm happy I did it. And then I, th I think even if we placed higher at TI I would have probably still sought like a new opportunity, like a new, uh, like it is like the contrast to OG, right? So I, I thought I wanted to, uh, just to try something else in my career. So it would happen anyway? I think so. I mean, it's hard to say because obviously losing TI like changes a lot of how you think and it's it's impossible to say what would have happened if we placed top three or top two or whatever. But I think no matter what I would have had, I would have had a desire to join this team, I think. So, yeah. But still, with new opportunities, you would replace Peter in his captain position. So does it mean for you that it requires from you much effort to put into this, to capture all this stuff, not being all in position for support, but a captain, a coordinator, and as well, and drafter. Yeah, I mean, at the start, it was obviously a bit scary or like uh, intimidating in some way. Like I didn't know what was gonna happen. I just, I, I had to think about it for myself and evaluate myself if I was gonna be able to do it, if I was gonna be able to captain a team. Um, but after a short while, after we played at the MDL, I, I realized that it was not gonna be it wasn't going to be the same role that Peter had, like it was more of um, like a unity thing. Like we would play where everyone has like a sort of responsibility and then towards the public and stuff, I, I would have the responsibility for the strategy. But uh, in the game, we all knew like who was responsible for what and we all like took a, a share of the blame or whatever. So it was not, it's not really comparable to Peter's captaincy because it's, I would say it's quite contrasting in that way. And yeah. It was just something different for me, and so far it's been good. Uh, going back to his interview, he touched upon the issue of balancing between RTs and Sumay. Like, you have two or even sometimes three core players in a team, I mean, universe. So, how do you manage to figure this out? If, if someone's shouting for you, hey, dude, I need help, yeah. <laughs> and three of them, what do you do? <laughs> I mean, I think it's a lot about those two between themselves, like between Sumail and RTC. And I think they've done a good job so far at knowing when. Uh, which one, which of them have like the game winning role, like who has to win the game for us. Because it switches between game, from game to game, depending on the strategy and the draft, but um, it's hard to say for me. I, I haven't felt like any issues with it so far. Um, I feel like they're all, they're like pretty open to admitting when they, they make mistakes and their communication is pretty good. So I think it's okay. And I think both Misai and Sahal realize that we have to, we have to play around these guys because they're like, we know what we can expect from them, and in most games we, we're going to be have to be playing the supporting role, and they just they win the game for us. Mm -hmm. And 
going back to Peter again, uh, what is his role right now? He's only CEO or he's taking some part in uh, some he, training process? No, or? He's, not, he's not part of the training for uh, the Dota squad, but mainly management for EG, yeah. And Clinton's? Uh, Clinton is coach first, so he's like at events and at yeah, the Yeah, and here, he's here yeah, with he's you here too. as well. Yeah. Okay, would you share uh, with us any plans of you and your team for the nearest future? Um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. After this tournament, we we're going to have a break for a month. And then, uh, I mean, personally, I'm going to go on vacation. I think most people will take a rest, maybe a stream, stuff like that. Um, just try to develop on their own. And then at the beginning of March, we'll get back together and we'll be in our team house for a month uh, from March to April. Uh, and then we'll go to DAC and then Kiev Major and then we'll take it from there. Obviously, we're going to practice for for both of those events at the, at the bootcamp. Okay, oh, well, thank you so much for the interview. Wish you best of luck. Maybe you have any shout outs or call outs before I let you go? Uh, no, I don't think it was. Sh uh, shout out to our sponsors. Uh, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks again and thank you for watching. Traditionally, stay tuned for more videos to come. Bye.